Oh my god, hey fellow sports enthusiasts! Welcome back to my Stagey YouTube channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And I like sports now because I saw one tangentially football-related piece of theatre. I'm just kidding. This hat is actually from Waitress, and the 2022 World Cup is built on the bones of migrant workers and the persecution of the queer community. I was, however, very intrigued by the show that this particular video is going to be about. But not for football reasons, for gay reasons. So if you're meeting me for the first time, this is my stage YouTube channel where I talk about shows that I have been to go and see and I review stuff uh, that I've been invited to. And I discuss the theatre industry worldwide and gossip and news and rumours and everything going on with plays and musicals on Broadway and in the West End. And this particular play I have been fascinated by since it was announced. This is a dramatisation, a theatricalization, if you will, of the libel court case brought by Rebecca Vardy against fellow footballer's wife, Colleen Rooney. Can I say wag? Is wag a slur? Now, as evidenced by what you are seeing before you, I spend a lot of time on social media, so I have been aware of this particular court case since, uh, I mean, since we all were, since Colleen Rooney infamously uh, posted on her social media exposing, allegedly, exposing uh, the person who was selling private and fabricated stories about her life to a newspaper. And this was the post that launched a thousand memes, and then eventually, a few years down the line, post the end of the world, Rebecca Vardy then brought this libel case against Colleen Rooney. So the play that I went to see last night could be characterised as reaction theatre. And this happens sometimes when something is huge in the public interest. Uh, theatre makers will work very quickly to put together a piece of theatre um, dramatising those events. I have seen another play like this before, something called Great Britain, that was all about uh, the phone hacking news of the world controversy of a few years ago. Usually we will see these plays happening very shortly after the trial has ended, because that is when they are then legally allowed to speculate on these things, uh, and it wouldn't be uh, considered interfering with the legal process of an ongoing investigation. Now this is being spearheaded by two producers, Eileen Davidson and Eleanor Lloyd. Eleanor Lloyd is the current president of the Society of London Theatre and is also acting as a producer on another courtroom based drama, Witness for the Prosecution. So when this was announced with their names attached to it, I just assumed that this being a courtroom drama, because what this is dramatizing um, of the whole Wagatha Christie thing is the recent trial. That's what this uh, that's what this play is about. I had assumed that they would be staging it in County Hall, uh, the venue that was previously a courtroom, where Witness for the Prosecution is being staged in a site-specific production. I had just assumed that. However, no, it's actually playing uh, for a few Monday performances into the new year. I think it's doing eight performances at the Wyndham's Theatre, where Life of Pi usually plays in the West End. So I was lucky enough to be offered a ticket to go and review this show, and that is what I'm going to be doing for you here today. Now, I'm going to discuss all of the things that I normally do. We're going to talk about the play, we're going to talk about the cast, I'm going to tell you what worked, because let me tell you, surprisingly, some of it really does work. Um, I'm also going to tell you about where it could be improved. This is something in a very early stage of development. Like I mentioned before, it's a quick reaction piece. They've turned this around very quickly. There will be things uh, that can grow and continue developing with this particular production, and there are some areas where I think it could definitely be improved. But unusually, I'm also going to add in a bit of a new conversation, something I don't always do in my videos. And that's going to be to answer the question, should this be being staged at all? Is it responsible for us to be staging a play like this in the West End right now? So all of that is to come momentarily, but before I get into it, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you're subscribed to my stage YouTube channel. I post video reviews like this all the time, so you can find out about all the other shows currently running in the West End and what I thought of them. And I've also been known to talk about some substantial Broadway and West End drama if you vibe with that kind of thing as well. And if you're watching this video, chances are you probably do. Who doesn't love drama? I'm a theatre channel, come on now. If you really enjoyed this video, you can use the super thanks button down below to give me a tip that very much helps me to make regular content as a stagey content creator. And also make sure you go and find me on all of the other socials I'm on as well. That is Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, at Mickey Joe Theatre. Now, let's talk about Vardy versus Rooney, the Wagatha Christie trial. So like I mentioned, I was just so intrigued about this. I was tickled by it as a concept, 
And I, like many people, had been taken in by that initial social media post, the way that she had worded it, uh, the way that she had orchestrated this entire situation for months. I love when these kind of things happen over a drawn out time and the fact that we were just hearing about it at the end and this had all gone on and she was suddenly revealing. I liked the way that she delivered it. There's something inherently theatrical about the way that she said it's dot 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 Rebecca Vardy's account. I didn't follow the subsequent trial as closely, but I have to say I was tickled by this being announced as a play in the West End. But I didn't know what to expect, and I'm here to tell you it is quite funny, and it's it's rather entertaining, and I would go as far as to give this a four-star review. So here's what really works about the show. They have this strong concept. As soon as you go in to the auditorium at the Wyndham's Theatre, they have utilised what they can, given that this is, you know, the stage of another show. Uh, they have the back wall of The Life of Pi, which works quite well for this set, actually, for what they're trying to do with it, and they have rolled out this AstroTurf uh, football pitch situation, and they have a couple of pieces of courtroom furniture on top of that. But the metaphor that they are using throughout this thing is they are comparing the trial and these two uh, very public adversaries, Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy, as uh, rival uh, football teams, basically. And to that end, you have two commentators as well, who also multi-role and play other parts throughout the show, but we keep going to them for um, match highlights and commentary as if it's a football match. So I think that metaphorical framing device is very strong, it's very clever, it sets the tone for what this theatricalization is going to be. It's gonna be tongue in cheek, it's gonna be camp, it's meant to be funny. This is not a serious, provocative courtroom drama. And there's cute little things as well. The judge has a referee's whistle, and that is how they start and finish the trial. I think this metaphor could be pushed even further, because those are some of my favourite parts of the play, is when they do a replay of something like an action replay or match highlights, and we cut to the commentators. I think visually they could incorporate more that pushes this metaphor of it being a football game, and I think that we could have more from the commentators as well, but I will talk about that more momentarily when I tell you about the script. So it is heavily based on the actual court transcript, but it has been adapted by Liv Hennessy. And when I say heavily based, it is verbatim. And that's actually what makes it even funnier. The fact that you know, specifically in the first act, that these are the actual responses that Rebecca Vardy gave to these actual questions, that is both shocking and hilarious. I think if this was a dramatization, it would be slightly less inspired, but it soars comedically on the fact that this is what was really said in court. And I guess there's a certain interest around that as well. The fact that it's based on a true story makes things a lot more interesting and impactful to a lot of theatre goers. You know, we like to know that there's truth and that there's reality in what we're seeing and that it's not just been completely fabricated for dramatic purposes. Does it also feel a little bit like public voyeurism? Sure, but then why does anyone follow trials if not for that exact kind of vibe? Now, the trial took place over various days. So what Liv Hennessy has done is condense this into a two-act structure where Rebecca Vardy takes to the stand once, and that is the duration of the first act. She is cross-examined uh, by both parties' legal teams, and then Colleen Rooney takes to the stand in the second act, at the end of which there is a brief appearance from Wayne Rooney, who is also cross-examined on the stand. And there is evidently a lot of skill in the way that this has been condensed and edited to make it a more compelling two-act structure. However, there are moments in the first act where certain events are told from Rebecca Vardy's perspective, and then in the second act we go over the same events from Colleen Rooney's perspective, and they cover the same ground, and I think it might be more dramatically satisfying if there was some way of us switching between the two, because by the time that we've worked out as an audience that this is what it's going to be, her in the first act, her in the second, it being a game of two halves like football, that's quite clever, but it does feel a little bit stagnant by the time the second act rolls around. I think there just might be a punchier and more dynamic way of alternating between the two. So I'd mentioned before that we have these commentator characters as well, and these are the only moments where we break away from this uh, verbatim retelling of the court, because they, in the playwright's own voice, or in their own voices as uh, third-party characters, they commentate on the events of the trial. And I really wish 
that they provided more commentary. They start out very strong, and then as it progresses, I mean, there are some moments where we cut away and there's a big lighting switch and a sound switch just to cut to them in the front, and it fades down on the trial, and we light them up in the front just for them to say, oh, that was shocking, and then it immediately goes back. Those feel like wasted opportunities for them to interject and to represent what the public would be thinking and how the audience are reacting to what they have just seen. They do provide some interesting analysis, but much like a late-stage football game towards the end of the trial, it feels as though they're rehashing a lot of the same points that we've already grasped. So I think those characters could definitely be utilized more, and it would offer more of a perspective on what we're actually seeing. But then it depends if the intention of the director and the playwright in the production is for you to be guided in a certain direction, or for the audience to simply be offered the reality of what happened and allowed to make up their own mind. That is another benefit of having the two-act structure. You know, I think you end Act 1 feeling a certain way about the case, and then Act 2 has the capacity to change your mind on that slightly. For the benefit of anyone seeing this particular production, it is performed script in hand, but the way that they do that is very clever. The scripts feel very unobtrusive on the stage because they each have little tablets uh, that they refer to as if those contain all of the court documents. So they're not reading from the script with their eye line down here for most of the time. They are engaged with each other. They are looking out, they are acting as you would expect, but they have the script in front of them if they occasionally need a prompt. In the same way, when the judge gives her final verdict at the end of the play, she is reading from a little page of notes. And that is the final scene I will say is a little bit underwhelming. No, I'll go further than that. It's incredibly underwhelming because she gives this judgment that everyone in the audience presumably already knows. It doesn't offer anything new and a lot of the legal rhetoric that is used is a little bit uninspired and kind of waters down a lot of the drama that everyone is there to enjoy. A lot of the hilarity of this play comes from Rebecca Vardy and Colleen Rooney's vocabulary and personality being a little bit out of step with the grandeur and status of court proceedings. So for us to then go to a judge who speaks about it in a very traditional way is kind of a buzzkill. Obviously this is an early stage of the show, so whatever budget they have is quite limited, but I could see a future for this where they are utilizing projections. They refer to a lot of images and they refer to a lot of social media posts. Obviously given the nature of the case and of the trial, they refer to a lot of uh, Instagram posts and articles. And I think if we were able to project those or have those on screens somewhere, um, that would be a great visual reference, but I wouldn't want them to just post all of the screenshots of conversations that they refer to. There's a lot of talk and retelling of WhatsApp exchanges, and the way that um, Rebecca Vardy switches out of her courtroom testimony and narrates the WhatsApp exchanges with um, the animation that she would have had when she was delivering them, that's really funny. I don't want them to lose that. So why don't I tell you a little bit more about the cast who are playing these famous characters. So the first person we meet is Laura Dos Santos, who is playing Colleen Rooney, and she begins the play by reading out the iconic social media post that started the whole thing. She gets laughs just for the accent that she is using. I don't know if this is her own accent um, or if it's just a very good take on a Liverpudlian accent, but there are certain pronunciations. I mean, at the very beginning, she gets a laugh just for speaking in the accent, and then later in the second act, when we hear her speaking again, she gets little laughs for pronunciations of individual words like notebook. It is worth questioning throughout this whether the audience are laughing at the script or specifically laughing at these characters. But that's a different conversation. Laura's brilliance as Colleen comes from how undeterred she is by the cross-examination that happens in the second act, and she gets a lot of consistent really big laughs from the way that she, I'm gonna coin a term here, she tech explains things, uh, which is when she's asked a silly question and she explains how easy it is to Google something basically, or how easy it is to look at your followers on Instagram. That gets a huge, huge reaction. Opposite her, we have the wonderful Lucy May Barker as Rebecca Vardy. Lucy is the performer from this cast I have seen the most before because she has a big background in musical theater and I've seen her in shows like Sweeney Todd. Lucy is hilarious as Rebecca Vardy, the way she holds herself and the way she acts with such poise to then just almost immediately be taken down by David Sherborne is, is quite brilliant. The way she attempts to sustain her dignity and maintain her stance throughout the first act as more and more holes are picked in her story and things are brought to light uh, that she has behaved in a certain way and the way she just tries to avoid those is really funny and that's where a lot of the early laughs come from because it is just completely incredulous. 
like I'd mentioned before, my favorite thing that Lucy does as Rebecca is where she switches from this courtroom demeanor where she's very poised and dressed all in black and trying to evoke sympathy and seriousness. And she switches back to reading her WhatsApps with the tone with which she would have sent them. And it becomes alternately vicious and complaining and nicey-nicey. And it's hilarious seeing her switch between those demeanors. Jonathan Broadbent and Tom Turner play the men who are cross-examining both of them. They play Hugh Tomlinson QC and David Sherbourne, respectively. And they offer a lot of status and they evoke everything you would expect from a legal character. And they are so at odds with the personalities of both of these women. And that again is a, is a real source of a lot of comedy. The commentators are played by Sharon Full and Nathan McMullen. And Nathan also plays the role of Wayne Rooney and just his physicality with which he does this and <laughs> the limited nature of his replies also very funny. I mean, people are very ready to laugh at his performance as Wayne Rooney before he's even arrived at the stand. And that's when you start to see how excited this audience is for this show and how ready they are to laugh at it. And that's something really special when a play has the audience so willing to enjoy it and so wanting to see what they already know it's going to show them. That makes the role of that play and that playwright and that director very, very easy. But is it responsible for us to be staging this at all? Let me explain a little more what I mean. So I posted on Twitter that I was at this play and I was so deeply intrigued about what I was about to see. And then separately to this, I don't know whether this was because people saw my tweet or they were just independently having this thought, whatever. There was a little bit of discussion that I saw about um, the fact that we have been in lockdown and willing theatre to come back and this is how it comes back with Wagatha Christie. And this was considered perhaps lowbrow. Now I think the West End, hopefully, is wide enough that we can represent the interests of a wide variety of audience members. I don't think it's an accident that Eleanor Lloyd decided this would be a great thing to schedule alongside the 2022 World Cup. I think there are so many football fans in this country that don't go to the theatre. I think these are two worlds that perhaps are kept very separate. And maybe she's trying to show that we can bring a lot more people into the theatre using something they are already very interested in. Something that piqued a huge amount of public interest uh, since it has begun. There's been something inherently theatrical about it from the beginning. The whole Agatha Christie connection, who is of course a huge staple in the world of London theatre. The Mousetrap is the longest running show not only in London, but in the world. So it does invite a theatricalization, And I'm not mad from that perspective that it exists. I think it was meant to be a one night only thing. Due to demand, they have added seven more performances. If something can sell in a West End theatre, then it should. The industry is in a position right now where we shouldn't be quibbling over what ought to be staged as long as it's morally responsible. And that's where I have a few more issues with this. Because as I was watching this, and as I was listening to their real words about how they didn't want this to be an ongoing thing, about how they wanted for this to be over, and how they wanted to be afforded a level of privacy, and they didn't want this to become this public spectacle as it had, I'm wondering whether the adapters and the producers were cognizant of that as they were putting this on a very public stage to continue this narrative because this conversation isn't going to go away while things like this continue to happen. And these are two people who are very much still alive. This is not a biopic of someone who has passed away. This is not something that happened years ago. This is fast reaction theater of a trial that just ended. I cannot tell you in any kind of good faith that either of these women are going to be at all pleased that this is happening on a West End stage. To what extent do we owe them their privacy? These people who live in a very public world, who shared this revelation in a very public way and then had this very public dramatic trial. There's also something more than slightly uncomfortable about the way Rebecca Vardy is positioned as someone that we can laugh at and perhaps vilify and perhaps decide that yes, she is responsible uh, for what she was accused of by Colleen Rooney. In particular, there's a line right at the end of the show where her legal representative talks about some of the online abuse and indignities that she suffered after Colleen had posted the infamous post. And the first thing he says gets a big laugh because it's just ludicrous and ridiculous in the way that it's been phrased. And then he follows up with something that was said about her child, which is just objectively awful and very brutal. And because we've been laughing the whole play and none of it has been a particularly serious commentary on any of these issues, there's a sort of a shocked laugh that comes with that. And people are really surprised that we've gone there, but it feels at that point immediately, to me at least, as though we have crossed over the line of good taste by having that conversation and by positioning that as something that would draw a laugh in a theater. 
What does it say about us as an audience that this is the kind of thing that we want to spectate? Perhaps I'm being a little precious about it. I am so intrigued as to what other people think about this. So let me know in the comments section down below. If you have seen the Wagatha Christie play already at the Wyndham's Theatre in the West End uh, and either of the two performances it has had so far, let us know what you thought in the comments section down below. Um, but more than that, do you think that it's a good idea that this is being staged? Do you think that it is morally responsible for this to be theatricalized in the first place? What are your thoughts on this complex issue? And thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stage YouTube channel for plenty more content just like this coming very soon. If you really enjoyed this one, use the super thanks button down below to give me a stagey tip, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash Mickey Joe Theatre. And if you want to review shows for yourself, click on the link down in my bio, sign up for an account with ShowScore. Not only will you automatically be following all of my reviews that I write that get posted to that website, but you will have the opportunity, just like I said, to review shows for yourself. Vardy v Rooney, the Wagatha Christie trial continues to run at the Wyndham's Theatre for Monday performances until just the other side of the new year. Let me know if you are planning to go and see the show as well. I am so intrigued as to what people think about this one. And I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>